Hi Dixons, I'm Jenny Thompson, Executive Principal here at Dixons Academies Trust and I'm speaking to you today from the beautiful Dixons Ollerton Primary, um, which is a wonderful school in our trust and actually really evidences our commitment to aligned autonomy because the curriculum here, the approach here is really different to some of our other primaries but with absolute commitment to achieving those exceptional outcomes for our young people. Today's little episode seeks to close out our thinking on mission mapping. But of course, you've heard the references to the Sisyphean nature of this work. So I'll spoil the punchline from the outset, that the very moment we get to the end of our mission map, we will be looping right back to the beginning. But I imagine many of you would have expected no less. For the sake of summary, I'm going to review the thinking on our intentional artifacts. For the sake of ease and my own familiarity, I'm going to share those linked to fairness, a core value at Dixon's Trinity, the school where I'm principal. Over-rationalising, over-explaining purpose and why, not carrot and stick, but rather if then this. So we're going to start with family dining, designed around our most vulnerable learner. The same meal, the same seating plan, the same roles, no one is left out. This really significantly reduces the risk of bullying and it provides a real sense of purpose, teaching students the social norms. Then we think about our learning habits. We only have six with really clear behaviour systems. They are not complex and all students can articulate what they are. Then we're always on task. We play by the rules. Students can learn, teachers can teach. It's really not fair to disrupt the learning of others and we all talk about that. Disruption is the theft of opportunity. Let's think about turn and talk in our classrooms. We have a really clear expectation around structured talk. It increases participation and accountability and thinks about that accountability ratio. We talk purposefully with all our students working hard. In our classrooms, we have prisms, red, amber and green. This ensures really highly tailored support for all. All students are highly responsive and really used to collect quantitative data and then our teaching is adjusted accordingly. Then we have our coaching for excellence, which is highly tailored professional development for all, every single member of staff. It's weekly, it's timetabled. Sometimes we say those timetabled slots are sacred. We focus on practice and follow up. It's all about those incremental steps, which the wonderful Mike and Adam have already talked us through in our earlier episode. Those three important characteristics of culture in high achieving schools that we keep coming back to pervade all of our thinking. Aspiration, the focus on creating a truly aspirational culture with the highest of expectations. Motivation, creating intrinsic motivation for learning. When students engage not for external reward, but because they find the activity interesting and truly gratifying. Our social norms, the accepted behavior that an individual is expected to conform to in a certain situation, they create the foundation of correct behaviors. So what social norms facilitate learning? Well, in so many of our schools, students enter the lessons in natural state. They take out their equipment and complete their do now, remaining in that natural state. And by that, we just mean real quiet. Then we have a choral response to the mantra. And the expectation is absolutely 100% of the children participate. When someone is talking, whether that's a child or an adult, we all turn and track. We have learning postures, which is just the common sitting up straight and paying attention. We speak in full sentences. We don't use slang. And how do we establish these norms across the school? Well, by creating clarity, by over-communicating that clarity and reinforcing that clarity around every social norm with both staff and students. And of course, importantly, none of this is very complicated. Clarity absolutely loves simplicity. If we create the right culture in our classroom, then teaching and learning can really happen. We are professional with the same expectations as a place of work. We do sweat the small stuff, but we are not superficial. We work really hard. We only have six of those clear, simple learning habits and we express them with clarity and we apply them consistently. 
all staff and indeed after time all children and all families use exactly the same language. We don't have a complicated or incremental behaviour system. In fact, the very success of the system is its simplicity, with very clear expectations and visibility in every classroom. Yes, we have high expectations that are clearly defined, but strong behaviour starts with the teacher. We always assume the best. We don't have a system of escalation. The 100% strategies we use in our classrooms are about teaching. An example of this, we always state and narrate the positive. So we might give a positive group correction such as, we are all now tracking Ibrahim rather than we should be tracking Ibrahim. It's not a scold. Or our whiteboards are at shoulder height so that I can see rather than I'm waiting for all whiteboards to be up. Subtlety of language is so important here. Or a really familiar example, I need three people. Make sure you fix it if it's you. I just need one, we're almost there. Let's get started. Rather than that oh so familiar, I need three people and one more student doesn't seem to understand the instructions so now I need four, I'm waiting. If I have to give it attention, I will. So it's always that assumption of the positive. The first example shows that command of the classroom and the teacher is narrating things getting better and the positive is normalized for everyone. In the second, everything is getting worse and probably without consequence. It's not a nice place to be as a child or as the adult. We narrate what we want to see rather than highlighting the behaviors we don't. And we always try to enable a positive response. As we often say, we are not trying to win an argument with an 11 year old. We are always the adults in the situation. And therefore consistency is paramount. It's not helpful if you have a member of staff who doesn't use the same routine. It's not fair on staff or on the students. Students should know what to expect in every lesson. We state the positive. We avoid rhetorical questions. My goodness, they are the center of so many issues in schools. We enable a positive response. We make it easy for the child to respond positively. We de-escalate situations and always look for opportunities to do so. We consider our tone and our expression and above all else, we follow the routines. And that little salt shaker you can see in the image is the symbol of using praise sparingly so it retains its meaning and authenticity. As we discussed in an earlier episode, children are hugely astute to insincere praise. For example, praising a student for following a routine such as, well done for having a pen, that's wonderful, implies that that is not a social norm and that your praise lacks sincerity to that child. But saying thank you for following the expectation of having all your equipment sends the message that you couldn't imagine a child not following through because that's how we do things here. That's the social norm in the classroom. So we, if we review our, our mission map so far, alongside everything we've, we look at, we, have, we create a detailed narrative to ensure we all know what we mean and we can share and amplify each other. Barack Obama recently spoke about the societal divisions in America being predicated on the rejection of, of shared definitions. He called for the recognition of a common set of facts as a way to create clarity and the ability to share in productive discussion. Over time, we have created detailed narratives in which we create that clarity for every routine. We call these our microscripts, and they are often part of our what to do's, which we'll talk about in lots more episodes. A social norm in lots of our schools is that students line up after break and family dining. I mean, line up with half of the school has the potential to go catastrophically wrong if staff are not clear about how this should be done and indeed the same for children. This level of detail means that clarity is created for all members of staff involved in the process. But it also has an assumption of daily shifting need built in. There really is no point creating an absolutely concrete version that falls apart if a little year seven is upset and needs to have a conversation. We are a school. Supporting one another and being highly alert to that needs to be live in all of our thinking every day. It's clear what everyone's responsibilities are and the actions they need to take to ensure lineup is successful. 
and therefore lessons begin purposefully and on time. Alongside Michelle Long, founding principal of Dixon's Music Primary, I contributed to the EEF's guidance report on improving behaviour in schools. In it, we shared the importance of simplicity around routine, doing the simple things well day in and day out, doing the mundane things well. It's not intellectually sophisticated. It's about doing what you say you're going to do. The way we create consistency with our routines is through practice so that those norms are internalised and are practised with automaticity so that it becomes a habit. It will only become a habit by practising something over and over again. In other professions, practice is at the heart of development, whether that's being a doctor, a dentist, a vet. However, do we really practise enough as a profession? We should be practising regularly so that we make our mistakes in front of each other and know how to deal with something when it happens for real in our classroom. In lots of our schools, we practise two or three times a week. We practice until we can't get it wrong and then really, we practice some more. Practicing key routines and rituals so that they become automatic gives teachers more capacity to think about all those complex decisions we have to make every minute when teaching our subjects. Getting the fundamentals right is so important and so freeing for the professional decision making of teaching. Consider the example of classroom entry. Meet your students at the door and set expectations before they enter the classroom. Greet your students by standing in the physical threshold of the classroom, astride the door, taking the opportunity to remind students where they are, how you feel towards them, and do that in a caring and warm way. And what you will expect of them. Hard work, trust, fairness. You can use the greeting to engage students briefly and build that rapport. Loved your homework, Marwa. Great appreciation after family dining, Sammy. Perfect uniform, Alicia. Obviously always being authentic. You won't have time to say something like this to every student every day, but you can pick a few each day and over time you will be able to intentionally interact positively with each student, reminding them all that you know them as individuals. So we have our detailed narrative or our microscripts, and from there we practice together. I know the examples here are from what feels like it's so often far away at the moment, the pre-COVID world, but I think in a way our pre-existing culture is what has allowed us in an area so swamped by the vicious pandemic not to feel absorbed by it. Our COVID secure routines are only modifications of those that pre-existed. And maybe that has been a little salve of support in these complex times for, for staff, for students and for our families. And then once routines are secured in practice, we return to them over and again in reorientation. Both at those times of year where it is part of the natural rhythm, the start of each academic year or after the return from a holiday. But we are also unafraid to be bold and pause our curriculum to redirect ourselves if the culture feels like that would be necessary. This decision is always worth it because culture is the multiplier. So from the end, we return to the beginning, always willing to scrutinise, improve and grow together as a team. Thank you.